from Studio 3 at Buzz TV. It's The Horse's Mouth with Tom McManus. All right, time now for The Horse's Mouth here at Tommy Max at my bar, of course, where everyone, and I mean everyone, is welcome to have a seat, grab a little beverage, and tell your story right here at my bar. Brought to you by our good friends at Dasher and at YOLO Rum. This time around, we talk a little publishing, a little fitness, and a little wellness. So let's get into it with the panel. First up, Diane Faulkner from Full yes. Circle Press. Hi, Diane. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you. How are you? Good. What's the latest over at Full Circle? What you got going on? What I've got going on, I'm um, proofreading some books, and I've okay. uh, just completed writing a, a book under my name. I ghostwrite books. Oh, you do? Normally. Okay. So, um, yeah. But I, I wrote a book under my name, and hopefully that'll come out in the next few months. How many books have you written under your name? This will be my first book this under my name. This is your first book under yeah. your name? Oh, wow. I, I, All right. You know, several books under people, other yeah. people's names. Yeah, sure. So what's yeah. this one title? This one is, the working title is A Small Business Guide to Employment Law. My, okay. I have another business where I'm a human resources consultant. Okay. So I'm yep. taking the um, the seven laws that that where uh, small businesses get in trouble, and I've just explained all of them. Okay. And and listed out exactly what they need to do to yep. not get in trouble with these seven laws. Wow. Tell us about the ghostwriting uh, real quick, Diane. Like one book at a time? Do you work on multiple projects at it? Like how do you? No, how do you I can all? I can do three books at a time. Can you really? Yeah. You cool. you know you're interviewing one while you're doing the outline for another, and while you're writing the body for the for gotcha. another. So Process. Just. You know, stab yeah. room. Yeah, very yeah. cool. Well, great to have you back. Thank you. Awesome. Keep up the great work. Elizabeth Marino is here from Hi. Soaring Bungee Fitness Studio. Yes. Yes. All right, welcome. How are you doing? You. Good. Very Tell good. us about your studio. What's what's going on? So, Bungee Fitness, I don't okay. know if you've heard of it. Um, Tell have us. you heard of it? I, I haven't. Okay. I'm excited to hear about it. All right, it. Yeah. so it's low impact, high cardio, okay. and you're hooked in a harness with bungee cords where you get your resistance training. Okay. So, it's awesome for people with um, joint issues. It helps with their balance. Older people because okay. they're in the harness and stuff so yeah. it's just I love it I so love it from the ceiling yep that mm -hmm. we're talking about yeah so you put the harness on the and harness you on. move around you're gonna yep. get all we that run, resistance and then we do a lot of squats burpees all kinds of stuff that sounds great so it yeah. is it's so much fun <laughs> it supports you so it's it totally right keeps you. you balanced keeps you supportive yep. oh, I like my, my oldest uh, client is 83 okay yeah cool. so it's kind of cool that somebody like that it's not just for old people yeah but um it just makes it nicer and it's like I said especially for people with um joint issues uh, yeah. knee issues and stuff like that are you the owner Yes, I am. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. My wife owns one side. You girl, our people, you go through a lot, man. It's a lot to keep that studio going. Keeps your body in shape. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So where, where are you guys at? Um, exit 323 off the Bucky's exit going east. Oh, but, okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Not too Open far brand away. New. Open in October. All so, right. Yeah, it's fun. That's awesome. What's I the agree. biggest challenge, you think, for you, your business? Getting the word out. And, and people that don't know about Bungie Fitness, they okay. don't really know what it is. And they've seen yeah. it on Instagram and TikTok, and they think it's just this choreographed stuff and it's yeah. actually in a, it's a workout I mean it's you get your heart rate up which is yeah. what I was looking I for. I can see people unsure that would give them comfort with the harness. It does. Right? Mm -hmm. It does. And we take, really right? work. Yeah. You're not sure going in there, but you're right. going to be protected. You're not going to get hurt. We work with yeah. balance, cool. so it's kind of nice. All right. Um, so, yeah, cool. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. All right, Flynn Anderson's here. Old Man Energy. Old Man Energy, yes. Father of seven. You better have a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. thought I had a ton. I didn't realize how tired I was till I was starting growing up. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Tell us so, about Old Man Energy. Um, I'm the founder and the host of the Old Man Energy podcast. Okay. It um, cool. started out as my leg legacy to leave my story behind. I've got a fairly unique backstory with the children and there's okay. other issues there. Sure. Um, turned into talking about masculinity, men's mental health, mm -hmm. and now we're connecting guys of our generation with younger men that really want to be good husbands, want to be good fathers, want to be good leaders, yep. and they're really confused about how to do that now. Maybe they come from a single mother household. Sure. They're getting told by social media that masculinity is toxic and yeah, it's not right, good. Right, they're right, very, right. very so confused. <laughs> so we're spending a lot of time in the men's mental health issues, yep. and we're spending a lot of time just in masculinity in general, trying to get the word out that it's not a bad thing mm -hmm. at all. Right. So that's really what the core of what I do is. You know, it's funny. I was just having this conversation the other day with a friend of mine about masculinity. And I said, you know, my father won this award at Rutgers University in 1947. It was about, it wasn't about, uh, it was scholar athlete, like uh, whatever, whatever MVP is scholar athlete, mm -hmm. for lack of better terms. And one of the, the uh, adjectives was manliness. 
Oh, and I was like, awesome. whoa. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard that a long time. Yeah. You know? yeah, but it's true. I'm glad you're, uh, you're standing up for that because it is. You feel like, wait, can't I just be? Yeah, no, There's nothing wrong with being a man. And no, no. you feel how that is and masculinity and all that. No. Just got to be good. Uh, got to be good. Yeah. Pause, technical. Uh oh. We're going to stay all that again. Can you start that question again, Tom? What, uh, what was it? What did I say? You were talking about masculinity, and it's not wrong to be a man. It's not right. That's what you were. Thank Rutgers. you. Rutgers. <laughs> Rutgers. Yeah. Rutgers with your dad. Uh, was it Rutgers? Yeah. Did, did you get that or no? Are you all still No, we did not. No, I'll start okay. with, uh, I was just having this conversation the other day. How about that? I'm just making sure that we're not. Okay, got it. You say what? I'm just hanging around for fun, man. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'll tell you in. Five, four, three. You know, I was just having this conversation the other day with a friend of mine about masculinity, and I was telling the story. My father won this award at Rutgers University, scholar, athlete, on and off the field, and one of the descriptions was manliness. And I was not okay. granted in 1947, but still, you're like, yeah, what? there's nothing wrong with it. What's no. wrong with, with mm -hmm. that? Well, you know, if, now look, can't, nobody can abuse anybody, can't be abusive, can't walk around like, you know, I'm a man and everyone's beneath me, because we don't believe that, right? But there's nothing wrong with having that masculinity inside yourself. Not, not at all, and you hit on something really important, is yeah. the fact that a truly masculine man is not a tyrant. He does mm -hmm. not pick on people smaller than him. Right. He does not abuse women and children. Mm -hmm. Quite the opposite. Yep. It's these confused young men mm -hmm. that are told it's bad to be masculine, but yep. they still feel that way inside. They're the ones turning into the tyrants, and they right. need men of like our age yep. to step up and teach them how to be men. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we were taught. Did you I, say my thing? dad, my dad same was thing? a perfect example, and he was a great leader. He loved my mother, adored my mom. I mean, just just adored her, always took care of her. You know, she took care of him. It was a great relationship. He's been gone a long time, but he still influences me today. And it's just the way he was, you know? He was just an honest, good person. You know, you're right. A, a, a masculine man is a confident man that doesn't need to go pick on anybody, huh. that doesn't need to abuse or, you know, show, you know, stick out his chest. He, he's, he's got that all inside. He's not worried about it. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah, I love that. Man. He exudes so, it. Mm -hmm. and I yeah, he exudes it. He exudes it. Right. it. He right. doesn't have to... Prove you just, you just know. That's what. Yeah, you just know. I mean, you can yeah. tell when they walk in the room. Yeah. And I was the opposite of you. I grew up in a single mother household. My father was not in the picture until later in life. Yep. Um, and I was raised to be a weak man, so I would not have chosen myself out of a crowd to be this person that I am today. But wow. I had to make a physical choice to go find men to learn from. Okay. So I had some very close to my heart. That so. is fantastic, man. Well, keep up the great work. All of you keep up the great work. Before we leave, i got to ask a question. Since this is the Game Face segment with the ghost of Dave Campbell, Coach Campbell, uh, <laughs> is there an athlete, entertainer, anybody that inspires you the most? Um, now, most recently, sure. uh, Eddie the Beast Hall. Ooh. Power yeah. lifter, yeah. the first yeah. human alive to lift more than half a ton. Yeah. But he also is not afraid to be silly. He's not yeah. afraid to show his love for his wife. He shows yeah. taking his sons and doing stuff. He's a very well-rounded man who just is the example, yeah. the example of what we should be cool. in society. Very cool. What would you say? I'm going to say Tom Brady because I like him. Okay. I think that he's taking care of his body. He, yeah. you know, embraces the fact that he's getting older, but yeah. yet he's still you know, out there trying. So. Absolutely. I like him. Okay, last word. What do you think? Uh, old school, Steffi Graf. Oh, yeah, tennis player. Absolutely. Steffi Graf, yeah. yeah. She um, she worked hard. She did, she accomplished more in a shorter amount of time than any other tennis player. Yep. And um, she held her head up when there were troubles with her father. Yep, absolutely. I remember that. Yep. Yeah. Great player, too. Yep. Right? She was she fantastic. She was fantastic. Absolutely. Well, I said on an earlier segment, Walter Payton, so I'm going to stick with Walter because I grew up outside of Chicago and he was a hero to all of us. And when they won the Super Bowl in 85, they were all heroes to the entire city. Yep. It was absolutely great. Hopefully, we can feel that here in Jacksonville yes. sooner than later, yes. right? All right, thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate the great work. Keep it up and check out their great profiles. This conversation and so many others at the Daily News newsnetwork.com website. Till next time, stay safe out there and be cool. And we'll see you right here on The Horse's Mouth. Cheers. The coach should be going to bed at night thinking about the athlete and how they're going to help that athlete improve. They shouldn't be worrying about how am I going to quantify their improvement or 
am I going to have to keep up with all this information? Those things that are kind of background to the coach focusing there on the athlete. And so what Dasher does is it takes all those side things away, allowing the coach to focus then on the athlete.